Welcome me, welcome you to the house of be buying where all your dreams come true. Before we get into the video, make sure to like this video, subscribe, of course, um, share this video, comment down below, and don't forget to click the notification bell or up here to be uh, notified of when I drop new videos, which is every week, hopefully. Episode three, we are um, introduced to Bill and Frank, which this, this has to be the best love story during an apocalypse told on TV. I'm telling you, when I was, I'm telling you, when I got to the point of, uh, after Bill was introduced, we see that he was this person who was very, he was one of those, um, what's it called? Uh, conspiracy theorists who planned, who believed in, you know, an eventual ap apocalypse and planned everything out. Like they had, he had the resources, um, he had the tools, the food, everything backed up so that if anything was to happen, he would be prepared. And he was. And side note, can we discuss how white people during an apocalypse or during a pandemic, how we experienced in 2020, how people, not only white people, people that had the resources and the funding to prepare themselves actually survived. Like, I'm sure people with a certain bracket of money still fell, still succumbed to the effects of a virus, right? But to prepare yourself and to prepare your family and to like give your family that cushion to fall onto, a lot of black and brown people did not have that. And I'm sure during a, a zombie apocalypse, a fungal viral apocalypse, many black and brown communities would would succumb to the violence, would succumb to the fear, would succumb to just the the overall death toll. I, I just wanted to mention that because it was very like, yes, of course, black and brown people did live in his community, but Bill, a lot of white people on the show um, were able to survive. Yes, black people, brown people here and there survive, but it's a lot of nuanced information there in terms of how Bill was able to build up his his pantry, build up his uh, the stock of weapons that he had. I just wanted to mention that. But after being introduced to Bill, we found out what kind of person he is. He's very, uh, even before the apocalypse, he's very secluded to himself. He could, we could see that he's that type of person. Um... And then after all these people are rounded up and taken, later in the episode we find out, it's either, is it this episode we found out? I think later in episode four, we find out that all the people that were taken by the soldiers, by the army, were killed. They were not saved. Um, we find that out with Ellie and Joel, but we'll get to that. This episode starts off with like Bill right before the soldiers came and took all those people. Um, after he took those, after they took those people, he was able to get out. He was able to get uh, his neighbor's boat. He was able to go to, I, I guess, a local factory or something, get, like, you know, tools there, um, different types of materials to build a fence and to upgrade your house to protect yourself. He was able to go to so many different um, places in his community to get all of these resources and just to take and take and take and not just to take just to take but to actually use it to protect yourself really cool to see um, and so he was able to build this whole compound we can call it that he was able to build this whole compound um, right in where he lived this his neighborhood and days weeks probably months later Frank we find out who Frank is. So he, um, it was a little sketchy at first because I didn't, like, we, this is something new because in the game, we don't give, we don't get any backstory on Frank and Bill. We just know that they are, they're a couple. Um, that's all we know. But to get, to, 
but to have them be able to tell Bill and Frank's story, how they met, um, their struggles as as a couple in this apocalyptic world. Um, it's very cool to see how they did that. So, you know, Frank found, is trapped in one of Bill's traps, this big old hole. Luckily, he didn't get killed, child, um, because, you know, Bill, Bill was, he was not with it for any of the games. He was not for, with any of the games, Miss Girl. Um, so we find out, you know, Frank, he's by himself. He was in a party, but most of them have already died off. They were killed through their travels um, with one another. And he's by himself. He just wants food, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, Bill is a little, he's, he's some hesitation, right? As anybody will have. Anybody will have some hesitation. Like, this is a stranger. You don't know them. You don't know if there's other people in the woods waiting for them to... You don't know. You just don't know. So, there was some hesitation, but Bill let him in. Um, he let him take a shower. He cooked a meal for him. He brought out some wine. And then they started talking... I don't know how they got on the subject of a piano, but I think um, Bill was playing the piano. But then... No, Frank was there playing the piano. Then Bill came and started playing the piano one of those and then bill was playing this song blah 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 and then frank asked him is it what who um who is she he said something to that effect like who is she girl we know it wasn't a she it was a he miss girl and then bill said there there is no she and frank was like i know I was like, and then Frank went in for the kiss. I, was, I screamed the amount of screaming that I did. Baby, listen. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. I can't. Because I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. And then Frank Thompson, go take a shower. I was like, oh, girl. Y'all about to get nasty. I, of course, it's HBO. So, you know... They're going to take it there, Miss Mamas. They're going to take it there. And Bill, Frank, the after that pay, plays uh, Frank in episode three, baby, when I tell you that chest, his chest, and then he has a hairy chest, all his, hmm, that is my type of man, a beefy, hairy man. Girl. Ain't nothing like him. There is nothing like a beefy, hairy man. But I digress. Okay, so Bill comes out the shower with the towel wrapped around his waist. He gets in the bed, butt naked, as Frank is. And, you know, they give... I thought they were going to give the full effect of a, a love scene, but they didn't. Which, you know, I mean, it is what it is. But I gagged. I gagged when Frank went down. I was like, girl, I can't. And it was so cool how they showed their relationship throughout the years. And they were able to be a couple, like a full-blown couple. Like, they argued, they made love, blah, blah, blah. It was so cool to see. And what I love that they showed, because I literally gagged. I thought Bill was going to die. That scene where he was just in the middle of the street shooting at the scavengers, we could call them. Just people that want to take and take what you have. Because if you don't remember episode two, uh, Joel did say you need to protect. Because Bill didn't want to take the stuff that. No, it was. I'm sorry. It wasn't episode two. It was earlier in episode three when Joel and. What's her name? Terry? Tasha? Trish? You know, Joel's girl, I guess girlfriend, partner, whatever. She met Frank. They, they met each other and they wanted to barter. And But Bill didn't want to take anything from Joel and the the woman. But Joel did give some sound advice to Bill to say, like, you need to build up your fence because your fence is not going to it's not going to hold up. So even though he didn't take anything from Joel and the, the lady, however, he did take that advice. And, you know, he put up those cars. He added the flame throwers and all that different stuff. So he did take that advice. And that was cool to see um, during that whole scene of Frank being inside the house, waking up to the, the explosion of the fire and the shooting and the screaming. That that scene was so... It's so cool how they are able to capture um, 
the visual effect of lighting, of like lightning or fire or moonlight, just with lights. It's so cool. Um, and when Bill got shot, I literally thought that was going to be the end of him because they did it like a, a black cut and showed, I think, years later of them being elderly and um, Frank actually being the one that w needed to be taken care of because he well, he, he had leukemia or lymphedema. Or, he had some type of disease. I don't know what kind of disease he had, but it was something that like ate at him and like caused his body to deteriorate. But he, that whole scene of them, him wanting to like unalive himself peacefully with the pills. It was so sad because he was like at the end of his world, he's like in his, I'm sure in his head, he's like, I don't want to live like this. Like I can't keep living like this. I'm ready. Um, but Bill, he was not ready. It was so sad to see him. Cr like, he literally broke down. Like, Frank was the literally the love of his life. And I love how they chose to do it this way. Because in the game, Frank actually leaves Bill. Because I, for some reason, he's just tired of... I think he wants to leave the area. But Bill doesn't... He wants to stay. Correct me if I'm wrong. But Bill wants to stay... And Frank is just tired of Bill. And so he dips. He goes to get some, like, resources. Like, you know, med kids, food, whatever. He went to go get something from the community. And as he's out there, he gets bit. And then he, you know, he hangs. Yes. And <laughs> he, he underlives himself that way. So I, I love that they chose a different way. To still get the end effect, but to just, you know, make it more of a, a deeper love story, a deeper connection between both of the characters. Love it. Love it down, honey. Um, and then we get Joel and Ellie coming because they don't know that they they don't know they're gone. They just come in to get resources and they're, they're getting to their final destination. So they come, to, they find the notes and Bill's saying, hey, anything you want, you can have it. We're in the bedroom. Please don't come in here. We left the door open so that it wouldn't smell too bad. Um, and then it's just Joel coming to the realization of this and bringing up the fact that his partner, the what's her name? Trish, Tasha, Terry, Trin. I don't, girl, I don't know her name. Um, I'll put it here if I remember. Um, but he just, Joel is... Not only having to deal with the fact that now these weren't his friends, but he knew them. They're gone. And it's bringing back the memories of his partner. She's gone too. And so he's just having he's just having to deal with these emotions. Um, and so they Joel gets everything, you know, they collect their guns, the food that they that they could grab, any resources there, anything that they could grab to use that would help them, you know, survive. They grab, put in a truck, and they dip. And as they're dipping away, it's so cool that the cinematography, they they pan, I think they're outside of the house, and then they pan slowly to the open window that Bill said he left open. Beautiful. I love it so much. It was so, that's such a lovey-dovey episode. I was not expecting to be so sad on the third episode and to see perfect TV, a perfect TV moment, beautiful in a beautiful love story like it doesn't have to be a beautiful gay love story it's a beautiful love story period okay and then we go into episode four with um joel and ellie it's pretty much lighthearted in the first 10 12 minutes of the episode they're looking at the map they're going um they're trying to they're on the highway and you know um I love the scene because Ellie has, in the game, Ellie finds uh, in Bill's truck this, um, how do I say this? A book full of naked men. <laughs> you know, a magazine full of naked men. And she looks at it and is like, how long is this? And they do that in the show, episode four, which is 
It's so funny. Um, and she throws it out the window. A whole little moment, a whole little kiki moment. And, you know, the first 10, 10, 12, you know, minutes are just Joel and Ellie continuing to, continuing to get to know one another um, slowly but surely. Little moments of jokes and questions about um, life before this whole apocalypse of Ellie asking Joel that, like, how was it before then? And they get to the moment where they're on the highway and they get to this bridge where the bridge is blocked. This underpass of the bridge is blocked by, a, I, think, I think it was a bus or an 18-wheeler. Um, and so they have to go through the city. They have to go through, is it Kansas City? Yeah, Kansas City. Um, and it's so cool how they literally have, side note, it's so cool how they literally have every freaking detail down. Like, I don't understand, like, the amount of money. When Again, when we talk about budgets, you know, I've done a few videos on my page where I talk about a gr the girls with budgets. This show had a budget, okay? To be able to have these many cars just in this one scene alone where they're at the bridge... And to have them that distressed, that dirty looking, like time has gone by, like years have gone by to give cars and buildings and land that kind of look. That takes money. That takes people power, manpower to paint, to dirty up, to, you know, break down. It just it's so cool to see like they literally brought the game to life. And so they go through the city and this man, which one of the scenes again, from the game that I really love, this man, which is, he's a part of this larger group of people that if you're driving by or walking by or whatever on horse, they stop you to ask for help. Even though they don't need help, they just want to kill you and take your stuff. So they, um, Joe sees him and he tells Ellie, put your seatbelt on. And Ellie's uh, like, you're not going to stop? No, girl. No. Because Later in the episode, we find out that Joel used to do the same thing. That he used to be a part of the some gang, and they used to stop people, kill them, and take their stuff. So, um, they try to run him off the road. He jumps, the guy, jumps out of the way, and then they keep driving, and there are spikes on the ground. It takes out their tires. And, you know... People start shooting, pop, pop, pop. And then they run, I think, uh, the laundromat, some old laundromat, they crash into the building. And then this whole scene of Joel shooting and shooting, Ellie's hiding. And this scene where the guy, what was his name? James, I think. Brian? Brian. I think his name was Brian. He catches Joel off guard, and Joel is getting choked out. Ellie comes up behind him with a gun, and she's like, pow. Shoots the boy in the back. I think it was like lower, his lower right, no, lower left side. And then the boy literally has a moment of like realizing that he's dying slowly. Because one, he mentions that he can't walk. He mentions that, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're not fighting anymore. We're not fighting anymore. And then he starts to be like, I'm Brian. What's your name? Tell me your name. I don't want anything. We can, I, we can go back to my place and they'll my people will give you anything you want and then he starts calling for his mom once Joel tells Ellie to go away so he can finish off the job with a knife and he stabs girl it was that, that whole scene was so that boy went through so many emotions so quickly it was it was kind of crazy kind of crazy and so we get through this a moment of Joel and Ellie literally just trying to get out of the city just trying to get out because they don't have the vehicle anymore I don't think Joe even took his book bag with his stuff. Ellie is the only person with the bag, so I don't even know. They only have one gun. Two guns. Well, I think Joe did take that gun from the boy. So, But Joe doesn't have his like knapsack with all the things that he needs to survive. So it's like they don't have the car with the stuff in it. Their, their resources. They're on foot in a the city they don't know. With people looking for them. Because they just kill a bunch of their men, right? And so we get through this and um, still the morale of Ellie and Joel is still there. Like they're still getting to know one another and laugh and joke here and there. 
But towards the end of the episode, well, not towards, at the end of the episode, we get Henry and the little boy named Sam. And they got the gun pointed at Ellie. And Ellie was like, Joel, Joel. And Joel wakes up out of his sleep with the boy, um, the Sam, the child, with the gun in his face and saying, shh. I love these two episodes. These episodes were fabulous. Like, this show continues to gag me because I love that they're sticking, like I said in episode one and two review, they're sticking to the plot of the show, but here and there, they're able to create new storylines that still fall in the the pathway that the game has already set. And I, I love that because they can be so creative yet still keep to the main storyline of what the game was all about. So I love it so much, so much, so much. Um, I can't wait to talk about episode five, right? Yeah, episode five. Because that episode was so sad, but yet so action-packed towards the end. If you have not watched episode five yet, please go watch it. It's such a good episode. And when you're done watching it, make sure you come back to watch episode five review. Um, thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you liked about episode three and episode four of The Last of Us on HBO Max. Like I said, I will be dropping this video now once I get done editing it. And episode five review will be coming. Review and recap will be coming in the next few days. And I'm so excited to see what's going to happen on episode six. I'm so excited. I want more fight scenes with um, the infected, with the clickers and all that. I can't wait. So let me know what you liked about episode three and four in the comments. And we will be back with another video. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.